Alright, I'm going to start this video with a couple of conceptual problems that should be relatively simple to answer, at least if you watched the last video. Explain in your own words what is meant by the equation limit as x approaches 2 of f of x is 5 and is it possible for the above equation to be true and yet f of 2 to be 3? Explain. Okay, I'm going to give you some time to think about it. For part A, the given equation tells us that as the value of x gets close to 2, the value of f of x gets close to 5. As for part B, your answer should be yes or no followed by an explanation. What do you think? Is it possible for the limit of the function as x approaches 2 to be 5 and yet f of 2 to be 3? The answer is yes, it is possible that the graph has a hole at 2, 5 and the function is defined such that f of 2 is 3. That is what you would write as an answer if this equation is asked on a test. Here's an explanation with an example just to reinforce your intuitive understanding of limits. Let's consider the function f of x equals x squared plus x minus 6 all over x minus 2, which is just one of the infinitely many functions that fit the requirement. This is what the graph looks like. It has a hole here at 2 comma 5. Now think of part a. As x approaches 2, f of x approaches 5 and it is possible that the function is defined like so. I know this way of defining a function may be alien to some of you, and that is totally fine. You'll be seeing such definitions a lot when we get to a topic called continuity. Just understand that this definition is telling us that if you want to graph this function, you should use this expression for all values of x except 2, and at x equals 2, the value of the function is 3. Now, if you think of part A and B together, you should see that this function fits the given problem. And if you're still not comfortable with the explanation, I want you to understand that this equation right here, it just tells us what this function is doing when x is very close to 2. It tells us absolutely nothing as to what's going on at x equals 2. That's just how a limit is defined. And I can show you the formal definition of a limit, but it looks scary with a couple extra variables like epsilon and delta. Moving on to the next problem. Explain what the following equations mean. What about limit as x approaches 1 of f of x? This equation tells us that limit of f of x as x approaches 1 from the left side is 3, and the limit of f of x as x approaches 1 from the right side is 7. Let's consider this function as an example. The graph looks like so. You see, as x gets close to 1 from the left side, the value of y gets close to 3. And as x gets close to 1 from the right side, the value of y gets close to 7. And this is just an example that I created to illustrate the point. It is possible to create an infinite number of functions that satisfy this requirement. The next part of the equation asks us what about limit as x approaches 1 of f of x. Since the left hand limit and the right hand limit are not equal, we say that the limit of f of x as x approaches 1 does not exist. If the function were approaching 3 from both the sides, then we could say that limit as x approaches 1 of f of x is 3. For a limit to exist, the left hand and the right hand limits must exist and they must be equal. We don't care about what's going on at that point. That is an equation that we will use a lot when we get to continuity. Moving on to the next problem. This comes from the college textbook called Calculus the Early Transcendentals by James Stewart. For the function h whose graph is given, state the value of each quantity if it exists. If it does not exist, explain why. I think such problems really test your intuitive understanding of limits and therefore are almost always asked on exams. Limit of the function as x approaches negative 3 from left side. The function approaches 4, therefore the answer is 4. Now from the right side, again the function approaches 4. Limit as x approaches negative 3. Since the function approaches 4 from both the sides, this answer is also 4. 
value of the function at x equals negative 3? This whole slash ring tells us that the function is undefined at x equals negative 3. As x approaches 0 from the left side, y approaches 1. As x approaches 0 from the right side, y approaches negative 1. Since the left hand and the right hand limits are not equal at x equals 0, we say that limit of h of x as x approaches 0 does not exist. The value of the function at x equals 0 is 1. This filled in slash solid circle tells us that. So, a ring shows absence of a value and a solid circle shows presence of a value. Limit of the function as x approaches 2. This time we have to check both the sides. From both the sides it is approaching 2, therefore the answer is 2. h of 2 is undefined. As x approaches 5 from the right side, the function approaches 3. As it approaches 5 from the left side, we cannot say. Well, we could say that it is something between 2 and 4. Since that is a range of values instead of a single value, we say that the limit does not exist. How did you like this exercise? If you found it a bit difficult, don't worry, you will get the hang of it as you spend more time with limits. The next topic that I want to cover is algebra of limits. I'll be honest, this is a very boring topic, but it is important. I promise I'll make it worth your while. So, try to not let your minds wander off. Also, right after this topic, we'll solve some real limits problems, and that part is really interesting. f of x and g of x are two functions. Okay, two functions, such that limit of f of x as x approaches a is L, and that for function G is M. That means A is a point in the domain of both the functions, and L is in the range of F, and M is in the range of G. In simpler words, A is on the x-axis, whereas L and M are on the y-axis. We will use this information to simplify these expressions. Limit as x approaches A of f of x plus g of x. We can rewrite this like so. You might think that this looks like distribution. And I agree it looks like distribution, but trust me it's not. In fact, limit went wherever we had x, the variable. Now, using the given information, we can say that this is L plus M. You can do the same with the difference of functions. And I say functions instead of saying two functions because these properties are true even if there were three, four functions, as many as you want. The property is true. Now, we have the product of f and g. Again, limit can go wherever we have x, the variable. This simplifies to L times m. Next, we have the division of f and g. Same, limit goes to the variable. So, we have L over M. With division comes the obligatory rule that the denominator should not be equal to zero. If, however, the denominator is zero, then crazy things start happening. And we will discuss that as well as the indeterminate forms of limits shortly. Not in this video though. Here we have k times f of x. k is just a constant, meaning any number. Again, Limit goes to the variable. It does not care about constants. This simplifies to k times l. Finally, we have k raised to f of x. Same rule. Limit goes to the variable. So, we have k raised to the limit of f of x, which simplifies to k raised to l. Now, you know how limits move in a mathematical expression, which means we are now ready to solve some real questions. Limit as x approaches 1 for the expression x squared plus 5x plus 8. We know that limit goes to the variable. This expression can be rewritten like so. Now we apply the limit, which basically means to plug in the value of x. So 1 plus 5 plus 8, which is 14. Soon you will start doing these steps mentally. Well, actually, the problems will become so complex that writing every step won't be practical. So, if you see this as a part of a complex problem, you will mentally plug in 1 for x and jump to 14. But baby steps for now. Limit as x approaches 3 for 
4x plus 5 times x minus 3. This expression can be distributed to get 4x squared minus 7x minus 15. Now apply the limit to get 0. If you look closely, there is a wiser way of solving. You can think of these as f of x and g of x. Limit can go to both like so. Then apply the limit and get 17 times 0 which is 0. This way you do not have to do distribution. Limit as x approaches 4 of root 5 plus x minus root 4 minus x all over x. This one has radicals so it looks more complex but it is actually simple. Limit goes to both the numerator and the denominator. Let's apply the limit now. We get root 9 which is 3 minus 0 in the numerator and the denominator becomes 4. So the limit is 3 over 4. These problems were very simple. You cannot always just plug in the value. In fact, more often than not, you will be using complex algorithms before applying the limit. Here we have to find the limit as x approaches 0 for root 3 plus x minus root 3 divided by x. If you try to plug in directly here, you get root 3 minus root 3 in the numerator which is 0 and 0 in the denominator which is an indeterminate form. Without going into much detail, when you see a rational function with radicals and applying limits gives you 0 over 0, you have to multiply and divide by the conjugate. The conjugate of the numerator is root 3 plus x plus root 3. Incidentally, the conjugate is obtained by swapping the sign between the two terms. As a side note, in mathematics we can do practically anything as long as we do not change the value of the expression. We can cancel these terms out if we wanted to, not that we would, which essentially means we have multiplied this by 1. Multiplying by 1 does not change the value and so 1 is also called the identity element for multiplication. I went off on a tangent but that is modern algebra, a topic most of you would study after completing calculus. Returning to this problem, in the numerator if you choose you can distribute but if you look carefully it is difference of squares. a squared minus b squared is a plus b times a minus b Likewise, a plus b times a minus b is a squared minus b squared. So we have 3 plus x minus 3, which is just x. In the denominator, we have x times the conjugate. No need to distribute this because the x in the numerator and the denominator can be cancelled out. We can do cancellations only if both the numbers are not equal to 0. In this problem, we know that x is approaching 0 which means it is very close to 0 but not equal to 0, which means cancelling x in the numerator and the denominator is valid. Now we can apply the limit. We get 1 over 2 root 3. That is the answer. I will be posting some additional references in the description box. If you found this video helpful, do the YouTube stuff like, subscribe, comment, share, etc.